Hey everybody, welcome to The Home Show. I'm Miss Megan and we are thrilled that you joined us for our weekly service. Today we're talking about the book of James and I'm wondering how many of you love to be first? I know I do. Well, today we're gonna learn how to put other people first, our friends, our family members, the people around us. So sit back, enjoy the message, it's gonna be great. Hey church kids, it is Mr. Damon and I am so glad that I get to get to hang out with you. Now why? Why would I be so excited about that? Well, let me tell you, because you are one of a kind, valuable, important, and so special to everybody around you, to me, and most important, to Jesus himself. Well, church kids, before we jump into everything today, you know what time it is, people. It's time for the question of the week. The question of the week is this. Have you, it's probably not you, I get it. It's everybody else around you, it's not you. Have you ever, probably most likely isn't gonna be you, okay? <laughs> have you ever been selfish before? Oh, <gasps> no, serious? You have, really? I am selfish all the time. In fact, I think I was selfish like three seconds ago. Everybody is selfish now and again. But church kids, have you ever gotten in trouble for being selfish? No, oh, of course you have. Ugh. Here's the first thing that you and I need to learn about selfishness. Selfishness always feels good in the moment but it only winds up hurting you and the people around you. I'll prove it to you. I can remember as a child, as a tiny church kid's Mr. Damon, that I would be playing video games in my original Nintendo and my mom walked in and she's like, hey, you need to go either vacuum or scrub the bathroom floors because church kids, that was our chores when I was growing up, you had a choice. Vacuum the carpet or scrub the bathroom floors. The bathroom floors were gross. I just want to say that. Why? You can imagine, all right? So I was like, I don't want to stop my video game and go scrub the nasty, stinky, rotten bathroom floors. And my mom's like, no, you need to. And I started to get an attitude and I felt right doing so. Have you ever noticed that in the moment when we start to get selfish, it always feels good? <sighs> You're at school and a kid is bugging you. You turn and you say something mean to him. It feels good to do that, doesn't it? Your parents are asking you to do something you don't feel like doing. And you like start copping attitude and you're like, ah, you always do this and then you're mean, blah, blah, blah. It feels good in the moment, but it always winds up hurting us and the people around us. Have you ever said something or done something or disobeyed your parents? And after it was all said and done, you got in trouble, you sat there and you're like, why did I do that? Because that's what selfishness does. It tricks us, it lies to us. And it tells us through our feelings, oh, you should do whatever you want. You should say whatever you want, take whatever you want. Why? Because you're the king, you're the queen, and you're never wrong. It's not true, we are wrong on a regular basis. And after we act selfishly, we get in trouble, we hurt other people's feelings, everybody gets angry. Why? Because selfishness is sin. And we have been looking at the book of James. In the last couple of weeks, we've been learning that the book of James was a letter written by Jesus' half-brother about 15 years after Jesus went back up into heaven to teach the Jesus followers around him in that day and us, how God wants us to live. In fact, he wrote the letter to help us understand, hey, everybody, FYI, there's this thing, this enemy that doesn't like you and wants to ruin your life. And it's called sin and selfishness. And God wants to help you beat that thing. Well, church kids, listen to what he says in James chapter four, verse one. James says, where do you think all these appalling wars and quarrels or fights come from? Do you think they just happen? Think again. They come about because you want your own way and fight for it deep inside yourself. Church kids, 
James is talking about selfishness and he's talking about sin. Sin is the enemy of God. When Adam and Eve disobeyed, sin came into the world and now it affects every single one of us. It's not just you that's selfish, it's me and it's everybody. And sin and selfishness always winds up hurting us. But now we're like, okay, uh, so Mr. Damon, I realize I'm selfish, so now I need to like go fight my selfishness, right? Like, beep, 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 knee, beep, beep, elbow. Beep. No, it doesn't work that way. Because Jesus is the only one that's strong enough to help us put others first. You see, church kids, God has a plan for your life. And that plan is that we would be so strong in him, so confident in his love, that we actually walk around thinking and plotting and planning <laughs> how we can put others first instead of being selfish. But the truth of the matter is sin is too strong. The sin that's inside of me is so strong, I can't fight it myself. But I don't need to because Jesus already has. Listen to what Romans tells us in chapter 8. It says this, He, God, sent his own son in a body like the bodies we sinners have. And in that body, God declared an end to sin's control over us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sins. Church kids, when you start to feel selfish, when you begin to think, I'm going to be mean to this other kid because I feel like it and it feels good. We stop and we don't go, I'm not going to, I'm not going to. No, no, I need to be selfless. I need to be selfless. No, 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 it doesn't work. What we do is we look to Jesus because Jesus is the only one who's strong enough to help us be who God's created us to be. Self selfishness, it always feels good in the moment, but it only winds up hurting us and others. But Jesus' love is strong enough to help us begin to live selflessly. And the last thing that we learn today from the book of James is this is that Jesus' love controls you. It's not your emotions. Church kids, Jesus' love and his spirit is what controls us. It's not our feelings, our emotions. Romans goes on to say, but you are not controlled by your sinful nature. You are controlled by the spirit if you have the spirit of God living inside of you. Church kids, God chose you, he picked you, and then when we say yes, to his love for us. He fills us with his spirit and his power. So now we have the ability to overcome selfishness and sin that we could never on our own. So the next time your parents say something that irritates you or bothers you and you begin to feel that selfish thing start to come up and you're like, mm, stop and go, Jesus, Jesus, help me. Help me to put my parents first. When you're with your brother or sister and they're in your room playing with the toys, you asked them not to, and you feel like calling them super mean names, go, Jesus, help me to put the people around me first. Because selfishness will always leave you worse off than when you started. But God's love and selflessness will always put you right where you're supposed to be. What an incredible story. We are so glad that you joined us for the home show today. Did you know there's so much more that you can get involved with here at Church Home? For you kids, we have Bible stories that you can listen to throughout the week. We also have toolkits to watch the weekly service with your friends. It has activities and coloring pages and all sorts of resources for you guys to have a great time together. Visit us at churchhome.org slash kids for all of these resources. Have a great week and we'll see you next time. Bye.